put your hands together and give a huge welcome to Elijah Wood, Sean Aston, Dominic Money, and Billy Boyd! Wait, 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 you guys. Do you want to give them a really cool treat? Turn your flashlights on. Turn your flashlights on. Everybody turn your flashlights on. That way they take the video right now. On the count of three, you guys are going to go nuts. Ready? One, two, three. Now save, save your battery. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello, How's Atlanta. Going? I always think about that. You, you, they, at the concert, the flashlight, the whole time, right? And then after the concert, they need an Uber, but their battery is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, guys. Welcome. So glad you. you guys are be here. It's such a, look, we, look how many people here support you. We're so happy that you're here. Oh, thank you. We have a lot of questions, but before that, we need to do something as a group, guys. It's Sean's birthday today. <gasps> Can we sing him happy birthday? Yes! All right, ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sam Wasabray! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Thank you all so much. Thank you. See, honey, you could have been here, and then you would have seen them say, sorry. <laughs> all right, we have so many people who want to ask questions. Let's jump right into questions. Let's do it. OK, first question. Is this on? OK. Hey, thank you for bringing the world's best fantasy to life for all of us in this room. question for each of you, but it's the same question. I want to know which of the extended editions of the trilogy is your favorite movie? I know, it's such a hard question. <laughs> I still think Fellowship is my favorite. The Fellowship? Of all the films, and I think it's because of the, of the Fellowship and, and the building of that, the innocence in the first act of the film where you really see the world before it's, it gets really dangerous and dark. And so you establish these characters, you get to spend time in Hobbiton, and then the journey takes forth. And then, you know, the, the sort of coming together of that fellowship is such an extraordinary thing before it then, it splinters off and everyone kind of has their, their own function and Frodo and Sam go away. So I just, I don't know, I still think the fellowship is just, as a completed story, is maybe my favorite part. Um... For me, it would be Return of the King, because, yeah, Pippin saves Mary. Yes. He saves Gandalf, and ultimately saves the world. I know there was two other hobbits climbing up a hill or something. It's, it's more like a mound. Yeah, just climbing a up hill. A, a mound. A hillock. Yeah. Mine would also be Return of the King, because Mary stabs the Witch King, yeah. thus saving the world, whilst Pippin is hiding behind a castle wall crying to Gandalf. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't pick one. No, no, no. Fighting the cave troll, Halder coming with the elves to save Minas Tirith, and um, flying uh, with the eagles on the way home. Take all that. Woo! Thank you! Thank you so much! Excellent. Now that I'm this age, I'm very pushy. <laughs> Next question. Hey, everybody. Uh, so about 10 years ago, uh, I was able to meet Billy at a different con here in Atlanta. Uh, and Billy, you gave me the advice to tell the girl of my dreams how I felt about her. Um, and I'm very lucky that now, 10 years later, uh, I get to call her my wife. Um, Thank I'm, God. I'm really glad that worked out. <laughs> that could I have been I thought it was going to be, I'm gay, but no. <laughs> 
Uh, Great. Where is she? She's, she's right over here. In the, yeah. Crying over here. Congratulations to the two of you. Thank you very much. Uh, so my question is, um, you know, there, there's so many amazing fans in this room. What are some of your favorite fan encounters that you've gotten to have over the years? I, I mean, countless. Countless, countless, countless fan encounters. Um, Lord of the Rings are deeply uh, meaningful stories on an emotional and a psychological level. Um, uh, and so people who've gone through hard times in their life will come up and express what the books and what the movies meant to them during that hard time in their life. And it always feels nice to have played some small part in a project that can... Um, that people can hold in their hearts like that. So, and then other people want you to sign body parts that your wife says, no, you're not allowed to sign those body parts. <laughs> I've been around for some uh, proposals, which has been fun, you know, when proposals has, have happened around me, or we're all lucky enough to be on this Cameo app where people can book us to do stuff. And in that Cameo app, I've been able to tell people that they're gonna have a baby, that someone's going to propose, a big surprise type thing. I think those are probably my favorite experiences is when you, you get a chance to do something a little unique and special, you know? Yeah, I mean, like Sean said, just to piggyback on that, I think, you know, the most profound moments are, are when people are sharing their personal experience with you and, and, and what it is that you have done or been a part of in this case a lot a lot of it is in relation to Lord of the Rings how that has affected them how it has brought the, uh, people together how it has you know is a thing that that people share with their families and their friends and also yes getting through them through dark times um, it's you know by extension having been a part of something that has such a profound effect on people's lives and how that can be shared to with us is just an extraordinary thing. You know. I have one that's kind of funny. People will ask you to help them propose, as Dom was saying, and I have three daughters, so sometimes a guy will say, will you help me propose? And I'll look at him and think, I don't want to vouch for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I'll, I'll agree, but I put caveats in there, like, listen, if you're perfectly comfortable, if your family supports this, if you've, you know, really done your background checks and, you know, you feel, you know, <laughs> if you put good time in and you're, it's safe and, you know, <laughs> he'd like to marry you. I don't know. <laughs> That's great. Our next question. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Elijah. Um, even though Lord of the Rings is epic fantasy, I think from Frodo's perspective, it can also be pretty accurately described as psychological horror, because... <laughs> yeah! Because there are scenes like him dropping into the water and seeing death faces, but even beyond that, um, I think his story is very much one of trauma and mental deterioration, and I know a lot of people struggling with mental illness, including myself, really relate to that character because of that. Um, and because you are so well-versed in horror film, my question is, if there is a darker, more gruesome horror version of Lord of the Rings, who do you think should direct it? <laughs> Whoa, that's not where I expected that question to go. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, what a great question. Wow, a dark horror version. Who would direct it? I mean, you know, obviously, Peter Jackson's background is in, is in horror, and there, there's a lot of that in the movie. I mean, Sam Raimi comes to mind. Um, which is sort of a notch of what, because Sam, it feels like Sam and, and Peter sort of started in the same place, and then Peter veered away from horror a little bit. But yeah, I, I don't know, something about a Sam Raimi version of Lord of the Rings, a little bit uh, gory and fucked up and hand, homemade would be kind of amazing. I would like to see that. I don't know that it's the dark psychological horror, though. That's, that's maybe... I don't know. Maybe Cronenberg's maybe too much. Carpenter. Can you imagine a John Carpenter Lord of the Rings? That would be on like, yeah, on, on, on big anamorphic lenses and oh, that'd be awesome. 
What, Wes Craven, if he was alive, would be kind yeah, of cool. Wes Craven would be cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, next question. Um, so I know the Battle of Helm's Deep is notorious for being one of the most ridiculously hard films to, or scenes to film. And since y'all weren't involved in that, I want to know what the most difficult scene for you guys was to film. I always, I know it's for you. Is it for me? <laughs> yeah. Huh. We were filming in a parking lot, and they, they put a little thin film of water on the ground, like in a little basin, and we're just meant to be walking through. You would have thought he was being tortured on a rack or something like that. His, it was really cold out. It was, to be fair, it was really cold out, and his hobbit feet popsicleized. They, they, they froze. So he was basically standing on two blocks of it was, ice. It was so cold, and it was a night shoot, wasn't it? It was. And I, I'm not good at night shoots anyway. I just want to go to bed. And it's like, it's like four in the morning, and my feet are icicles. And I thought, this is the first time I'm ever going to have to say, I can't go on. It's exactly how he said it. He's looking at me. And, you know... Can't when you're on a, on, a, on a long journey, you know, to get rid of a ring, you know, you, you have mates and, and there are moments where you can't help them. There's things that are going on and you can't help them. And I was looking at him and I thought, he's freezing to death. He's going to have hypothermia. And, I, you know, I, there was nothing I could do. Yeah. And they were doing things like getting, like, heaters and stuff that I'd put my feet on. But the break would maybe be 15 minutes and it would just start to heat up, and they go, okay, we're going again. And then we'd go into this cold, and it would just freeze. It was awful. Oh, I, I was loving it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was brilliant, because a few weeks earlier, I had had this iconic splinter moment with my foot, which was really, I mean, genuinely, a medical emergency, I think. <laughs> The, the local police had been called and the Coast Guard, and it was a big thing. It was on the news. <laughs> I, I think the splinter was made of titanium. It, it was very... It was small, but sharp, It you know? wasn't visible to the naked eye. It, it was eye. invisible. And you I couldn't s- see it. It was exactly. so small. It went so deep because you could barely see it. I never it. knew it was... what a constable was, but then a constable come out, right? Yeah. yeah. And, he, and Billy especially was laughing his face off at my pain. Because then, he stood in a real one that went right through his foot and there was blood and it was awful. And then I think you wanted to join in, but yours was rubbish. I think... Because <laughs> Sean's was so big, it couldn't actually get into the foot. But because mine was so small, it went... I felt it, like, in my heart ventricles. Is that... Is that accurate? <laughs> Maybe. I remember another day, actually, my sister came over to visit and we were doing this scene, you know, when um, Pippin picks up the Palantir and Gandalf grabs it off him and you kind of get an image of, oh, I'd like to see that again, you know. And it was filmed in a car park in in Wellington and they just made a, a pool, a swimming pool, and we were all, or whoever was there, Hobbit-wise, were on our knees to make it look like it was deeper than it was, so we're up to there. And everyone else was on horses, Gandalf and Legolas and everyone. And I thought, this is a great scene for my sister to see because it's quite, you know, it's kind of Pippin's doing a lot of stuff and there's horses and all that. And there was a break and she's sitting with a cup of tea and I went over and I said, what do you think? It's good, isn't it, watching a film getting made? And she says, do you know that those horses are shitting in that water? <laughs> and we were up to there. <laughs> and uh, they were saying, okay, we're going again. <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> right. I, I thought the catering department had uh, gave us some brownies or something, so I was... <laughs> As they floated by, I was just like, oh, lovely. <laughs> the horse kept stepping on my hobbit foot. Oh, God. Tearing off the toes of the <laughs> hobbit feet. But to be fair, I think my foot injury was bad. Yeah. But Elijah had consistently the most bloody feet f- like you. I, I think so. I think they were constantly, the thing is you were 19 and nothing seemed to bother you. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, your feet were always bloody. That's what I remember. 
The first remember... feet that they made for me were too small. So every time we had a break, I remember having to hold the big toe and go, oh, and just stretch it out, you know? They would get hot and tight. Yeah. I remember that. And then they an made old, new an ones. An old pair would do that too. If they tried to stretch a pair a couple extra days, yeah, it would you had to tight. grab the big oh. toe. So for two years, we're wearing hobbit feet. And they're wonderfully designed, soft cushion bottoms. But they're not very, um, you know, what is the word? Like good for your feet, not ergonomic, but they're just not very, you know, they're not supportive. So at one point, so you'd sit so as not to ruin the feet for four or five hours, and then they'd say, okay, run up the hill. And you'd oh, run up the shale hill, and the, your feet would get cut, and you know, your ankles would get cut, and then they would repair your feet. They'd put alcohol on it, and, the, so the, yeah, and then they would put makeup on the alcohol, and then you'd sit for a long time. So runners generally stretch, <laughs> don't they? I had my Achilles tendon started clicking, and I Thank you! <laughs> because they were so tired of my complaining that I'm like, you guys, listen, my, my Achilles are clicking. And they were like, yeah, yeah, no, I hear it. It's clicking, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so finally, uh, Richard Taylor, the, the wonderful special effects, you guys all know who Richard Taylor is, right? Yeah. So Richard Taylor um, comes to the truck or whatever, and, and he says, well, show me. And I stand up on the box, and I move, and it's going click, 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 and he said, well, I think it's catching, uh, the tendon's catching on this little piece of your, the bone. I said, I don't think it's supposed to do that. <laughs> and he said, okay, well, we'll put a little lift in the heel. He put a little lift in the heel, and I, I don't know. I, I haven't been able to walk to this day. <laughs> Maybe I can, I don't know. But it was a federal case with the feet. <laughs> it was. Thank you for your question. Thank you. I remember we could do like five or six hours just on the feet. Oh, easily. I remember <laughs> it was a lot. one of the bigger hazards with the feet is that if, if you were sweating, it would melt the glue yeah. underneath your feet. Yeah. So the attachment of the bottom of the, of the latex foot to your actual foot would loosen and yeah. come detached. So in, and if you would walk or run, you would slip and slide. And say yes. that. Yes, now right. imagine that phenomenon oh. is occurring and you walk up a volcano and you get to the top of the volcano and they say, you're gonna stand on this steep ledge where if you fall, you fall to your death. But don't worry, we have a harness and we're gonna put a cable on you. But your feet are still slipping. And then they say, now this little guy, we call him Frodo, is gonna go on your shoulders. <laughs> but we, we can't put a cable on him because it'll hurt your head or it'll be seen or something like that. So I remember with Elijah on my back like this with a hill with my feet slipping and I'm just like, oh man, yeah. It would be so easy. Boop, there goes Frodo all the way down. It would be that easy. And your feet, you're, you're like digging into the rubber trying to do it. And they're like, cut, that was good. I'm like, okay, good, thank God. Those were, those were intense days for us. So I got this tiny little splinter. I don't know if I told you. <laughs> right in the bottom of my... Okay. One like... day, oh, the last foot one, <laughs> talking about the sweating, I got toothache, went to the dentist in full costume, must have been looked weird to the dentist, said, you need a filling. And I said, oh, well, I've got limes this afternoon. I said, can you do it without numbing my... Yeah, and she was like, well, let me know if the drill, and she, and I was like, oh, and I was sweating so much, my feet fell off <laughs> in the dentist. <laughs> so I'm sitting in Rivendell, the Rivendell set, and uh, Tammy, who was one of the, um, special effects makeup people with the feet and stuff. We're sitting together and I actually have my Lord of the Rings book as if I'm gonna be reading it in this serene elven environment. And they're over, the hobbits are over there and I think, I don't know who else was there, but a little wind kept, kicked up. And then a large elven loom fell over and knocked me out. Yeah. Did you actually? Knocked out. You were knocked out. Okay. For, for, let me put it this way. I could hear 
the crack, like it was almost like a cricket bat on the on a ball, like crack, and my I could feel my chi- my chin in my chest, and then I looked up and people were lifting it off of me, so they were a good thirty feet away. Yeah. So I was definitely out from the time from the time. And look, the good thing is, I was taller, sort of bigger than Tammy, so I took the weight of it. That's chivalry. <laughs> and then I went to the um, well. It was funny because well, funny so. We wanted to get this one shot with us before I left. The wigs, the way they put the wigs on, first they twist your hair all over with little rubber bands, and then they put the wig on and they put the the pin through the wig lace, through the rubber band to anchor it down, and then they glue the wig lace down like this. The bruise on my, the swelling on my head was like this, and it was pulling (laughs) the, (laughs) the, the, uh, and I'm like, does it, is it okay? Does, can you shoot like this? <laughs> now, the upshot was, and this is the part they don't ever believe, but it's absolutely true. I went to the, whatever you call it, neurologist, and got a little t- scan or something, and he said that I had the largest brain he'd ever seen. Sure it wasn't the biggest head. <laughs> Potato, patata. <laughs> right, I'm not hobbits. as good at... Yeah. Hobbits. We got 20 minutes. Let's try and race through as many well, questions as possible. We've only had three questions. We got to keep going. I got, I got this. I don't know if it, I got this tiny little splinter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Let's do a speed round. Right. Thank you all, all right. for Thanks being question. here today. Uh, and again, a happy birthday, Sean. Um, has what was your relationship like with your fellow co-stars after the Lord of the Rings ended? Good. Yep. <laughs> Swell. Going fast, right? Ex- excellent. It's loud. Sorry. I was on a flight with Vigo three years later, and we didn't talk because we didn't see each other. And then when we were walking off the jetway, he gave me a book. What book? I can't remember. The, the, honest, the, honest, the honest answer to that question is look, what we went through together, uh, it, it linked us as family for the rest of our lives. The fellowship was a real thing. And, you know, years can go by and we don't see each other. That's not the case with us so much, but with other members of the cast. And we'll run into them and it's like no time has passed. I mean, it it really is an extraordinary thing that we all experience together. And they're an incredible group of people and we'll be family forever, you know. Except for John Reese davies What's wrong with that guy? (laughs) I heard he's going to do a convention soon and I hope I get to be with him. We love John. He's got my favorite Thank you. It's a beautiful signature. Sean, I have, a, I have a question for you. There's a debate, and people rage on this, and you're the only person who can answer it. In Return of the King, when you have the ring, and, you, and Frodo asks for it, and for a brief moment, Frodo's like, Sam, and you hesitate. Are you hesitating because you are being tempted, or are you hesitating because you know the burden you're about to give back to your friend? I love this question. Philippa, 17 minutes, Sean. 17 minutes. Philippa, I'll answer quick. Philippa was there kind of directing that scene too. Fr- Fran and Philippa. P- Peter didn't direct that, I don't think, if my memory serves. And she said, uh, because I would hand it back to him, and you know you're handing him something. It's everything, right? Like it's, you get to complete the mission, and it's, I know this hurts you, and everything else. But she said, do one like you want to keep it. And I said, no. She goes, well, just so we can have it. I said, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. Sam would not want to keep the ring. No, no, no. She goes, just give us one. So the, the, the take that they used, first of all, was a bad hair day, a bad wig day. So when you look at it, you're like, that hair doesn't look right. And then, and I'm at war with the direction I've been given. But there's no way that as far as I'm concerned, I wanted to keep it for me. I was holding it like I didn't want him to be hurt with it. Period. End of story. Excellent. Next question. First of all, I'm a big, big fan of the Lord of the Rings, and so is my mom. She's in her late 70s. And I want to know, what's it like working with Ian McClellan, known as Gandalf? She's a big fan of him, too. (laughs) Magneto's hilarious. Ian McKellen, what's it like working with him? You yeah, work Ian, with him. Ian's, Ian's a one-off. I mean, Ian was like, there's so many great stories about Ian, but I mean, very often dressed head to toe in Prada, from the hat down to the shoes, dressed to the nines. We were all young, 
kids at the time. I was 23, Elijah's 18, Billy's in his early 30s. We're all... <laughs> it's just true. Um, <laughs> we, we, were all, we were all partying a lot. Sean had a, a, a wife and a, and a lovely young daughter, so he wasn't out with us that much. But we would, Elijah and I would be DJing in a lot of places and out until, you know, two, three, sometimes in the morning. Ian McKellen, often there. Asking for gangster rap. Uh, could you play some gangster rap? <laughs> um, enjoying himself. And then after a few kind of months of that happening, he approached us one day and said, you know, I'm coming to all of these straight bars with straight guys. And as a, as a proudly gay man, I would like it if maybe you could come and hang out with, you know, my friends and see the life that I'm living. And we were like, kind of iffy on it. Like, yeah, it sounds okay. Like, it's not really our scene, but we'll do it. So we went one Friday night, myself, Billy, Orlando, Elijah, and I guess okay. we were a little bit nervous. As, did you come as well, Sean? Nice. I'm sorry, Sean, to not include you there. Um, I loved and we, it. I guess we weren't quite sure if we were going to fit in that well. And Billy tells a great story that he went to get a drink from the bar. And when he turned around, Orlando and I were on a table with our shirts off, just waving them around. And <laughs> we had a great night. Great answer. So, <laughs> our next question. Hey guys, thank y'all for being here. I can't be the only one who thought when we were singing happy birthday and Elijah knelt down uh, saying, no, you bow to no one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but my question to you guys is, um, what is your uh, favorite line from any of the, tr any of the series? Well, I alluded to it earlier, and by the way, the answer to this question will change if someone asks it again in two p So, uh, we've come to honor the alliance of elves and men. That mm. line of Haldir's makes me cry every time I see it. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> You're in Atlanta. <laughs> this is a convention. Yep. I think the, 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 the quote of Frodo talking to Sam and saying, you know, there's also, remember, uh, Samwise the Brave, and, the, and Frodo wouldn't have gotten very far without his Sam. And I think the, the acknowledge, that, that acknowledgement of, uh, of Frodo to Sam about, about the, the function that Sam played and, and the heroism of Samwise is so beautiful and important. Everyone always asks me that question, and I, and, but if you look at the beginning of that scene, Sam says, do you think we'll ever be put in songs or tales? So it's on his mind. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the moments on films where you don't expect a line to become, you know, some lines you get and you go, oh, that's great. That's a lovely, you know, moment. But the, so the one is the, um, what about second breakfast? <laughs> what, one of your lines. Yeah. But that, like, that moment, that whole scene just seemed like such a throwaway. Yeah. And it, even on the day, it was a throwaway. It was starting to snow. We didn't have time to film it. And then, you know, it was quoted on Air Force One. And, and, <laughs> and, and do you guys know, and I didn't know this until a few weeks ago, Philippa Boyens told me this, Second Breakfast does not appear in the books. What? Yeah. It is not in the books. Not in a book. It is something that was written by Philippa Boyens and Fran Walsh. But and it's what? a very hobbity thing. Or did we come up with it on the day? I think we came up with it on the day. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you, you look at the reaction from our friends in the room here. Is it about the universality of eating? Like, why do we love potatoes so much? <laughs> why? <laughs> What, what, I mean, they're great. I live on them. Look at me. I'm not a potato. You know, I'm not shy about my potatoes, but I, it's like something about movies that celebrate eating. Are, I don't know. It's a pretty it, also, it connection. It's, obviously, it's an iconic line. And like Billy said, there are certain lines that you know are going to pop. And I think we all kind of figured that this line was going to pop. But the way that Vigo delivers the line my friends, you bow to no one, as if he's kind of, he's slightly overwhelmed himself by what's happened, you know? He's like, no, no, that's not what's going on here, you know? That always gives me chills. Yeah. And then there's a line, uh, is it, um, 
in a world filled of mirth and magic, you lose time in yourself. I think it's a, it's a Frodo line. It's like a, it's like it a is, you don't really hear it that I remember, much. I remember a German a uh, journalist German asking accent, about yeah, that. We can move on, but that's yes. one of them. You guys, is everybody in this along here waiting to ask a yes, question? Yes, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Elijah is terrible at speed rounds. So. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, hi, I'm David, and uh, I've just been like a really big fan of Lordy's uh, series, and I just want to ask you, what was your favorite scene in filming the entire series? I love, this changes all the time too, by the way, but I, I loved the filming of and the subsequent viewing of the cave troll um, battle sequence in Mines of Moria. It was a blast to shoot. Yeah. The, bit, the comedy bit with you and the, the skeleton is fucking incredible. <laughs> and I just remember the, those days in there being joyful and fun yeah. and yeah. all of us were together, which was pretty rare, like that we would all be in the same room. And it was just fantastic. And hiding Action behind and, things. Yeah, and brilliant. There's a guy with a tennis ball on a stick. That was the cave troll for us. Just a guy going like this. Brilliant. It was brilliant. Ian was so fu fun and funny and uh, just brilliant. Or yeah, that would, have been, really that would have been my answer yeah, as well. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, was Sam great. gets to kiss Rosie Cotton. <laughs> With tongues. Oh, no, sorry, that was Billy and Vigo. Sorry, I'm confused. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Next question. Hello. Thank you for being here, and uh, thank you for your performances in all the movies. I, I, uh, it means a lot to me. Um, I find myself quoting all of you, actually, in um, different phases of my life. Um, I also do it with uh, the great Sir Ian McKellen in my house with my kids. Sometimes if they're acting up, I'll say, you shall not pass, and <laughs> slam my imaginary sap. And I'm wondering um, if any of you could swap with someone else who performed in any of the movies, who would you play? I, I couldn't do it. It's funny, I, we've had this question over the years and occasionally I'll say something like, you know, nah. Gollum or Smeagol, because I think reading the books, especially The Hobbit, my introduction to, to Gollum, it's a favorite character of mine, and the riddles in the, in the dark is such an extraordinary chapter, but I can't imagine the experience, and I can't imagine the films without everyone who was cast in their individual role, who embodied those characters so perfectly. It's hard to, yeah. That's a, that's a good answer. Well done. Oh, thank you. No, not so. <laughs> well, you said Lord of the Rings meant so much to you at this stage of your life, and you also, I thought you were going to say Chevy Chase's vacation. I, I was like, oh, no, other characters. I always wanted to be Vigo's character. I always wanted to be Aragorn. You know, right? Swarthy. <laughs> Good with the sword. Just saying. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Next question. Hi. Um... Lord of the Rings means a lot to me and my mom. We enjoy it a lot together, along with a lot of other things. And our question is, do you think there will ever be a Lord of the Rings theme convention like they do for Star Wars or Game of Thrones? Would you be willing to come all together? Oh, a convention. Oh, a, oh. I would be happy to show up. A dedicated Lord of the Rings convention? You might have yeah. to produce it. <laughs> Yeah, that would be amazing. Amazing, because you know, the, the thing is, is a, a gathering, there are thousands of people who, who brought those movies to life. Um, mm. and, a, and, a, and a convention that could celebrate every facet of the filmmaking process, where you'd have, you know, technicians from Weta, both on the digital side and the physical effects side. I mean, it, it would be amazing to celebrate all of it. You know, people could get made into orcs. They could have people there. That's a great idea. Great idea. I'm going to organize it. Brilliant. You don't think I can organize it? You think you can play Aragorn, but I can't organize a convention? I, I said I wanted to play Aragorn, so I think you could want to organize the convention. <laughs> but my money's on her to be able to do it. Yeah, I see you. Five minutes. All right, next question. Thank you, so Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this question is to each of you. Uh, in 
regards to not only the trilogy, but also in regards to the professor who basically dedicated his entire life to creating this. And in terms of us, like each of us in this room, we're all going to be gone in a hundred years time, but what you guys did is going to be forever. So how does it feel to you to have been part of something that impactful? We are immortal. <laughs> I, don't, I don't tend to think about that too much. It kind of I did. I, I thought about it for, at the Oscars, the third Oscars when Lord of the Rings won for Best Picture. And when it won, I had that like, it's okay if I don't do anything else with my career for the rest of my life. I've achieved something that was, is immortal and everything else. And on the, it was the Kodak Theater, and then it was the Dolby Theater. They keep changing. They have these pillars. And on the pillars, they have the names of all the best picture winners. And um, I remember like thinking, it's on a pillar, <laughs> right? It's, it's permanent. Well, like two years later, they, they took the names off. <laughs> 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 They're gonna rebuild the thing, the pillars will be gone. So I'm not 100% sure about the immortality thing. I think the fact that, like I said before, that so many people have been moved by it. You know, if that continues, then that's beautiful. But I, I feel like, I don't know. It's a tr I feel like it's a trick. Somebody's playing a trick on one's consciousness to be thinking in terms of immortality. I think we have plenty of evidence of um, rulers and others who uh, time got the better of. So you never know if the technology, right now it seems like digital will last forever, but who, who knows? Things move, things move on very quickly, you know, it's a shame, but that, that's true. You know, if, if you ask the, probably the average 13, 14 year old kid on the street, name the Beatles, most kids I don't think could name the Beatles, and it's important for some generations and other generations, it just kind of phases out, you know. I don't know if you guys are aware, but in the appendices, Mary and Pippin, after everything, you know, calms down and there's the scouring of the Shire and they go to visit their families and all that kind of stuff, they go off and they go and see uh, Aragorn and Merry and Pippin are actually buried with Aragorn and we've been pitching to Vigo that in our actual deaths <laughs> Billy and I would like to be just laid down next to him now Billy and I are 100% in Vigo I would say probably 12 13% he I thought said you're gonna say Merry and Pippin were fans of the Beatles and the appendices and yeah no no but over my dead body he said and we were like well that's actually how that's it's actually how work. we want it yeah <laughs> and he said no I'm out I'm 100% out he said <laughs> yeah. but we'll keep asking him. yeah we'll get him he'll be dead he'll die way before us so we'll have no idea exactly <laughs> we have time guys we have time for one more question oh. one more question all these people. Sorry, we'll all these people. Never hear those questions. Never hear them. Thank I just had a new idea for how to do a speed round. Go on. Everyone yell out your question at the same time. <laughs> I've never done that before. Do you think that will work? No, come on, we've got two minutes. <laughs> um, shout out, Sean, from a fellow Pisces. I've heard all these stories. Are you guys okay? <laughs> We're living. We're good. Yeah. We're all right. The romance between Legolas and This is a good idea. Go I had a good idea, you guys. We're going to get to the qu our last question right here. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm a theater teacher, and we're studying ensemble making and being an ensemble together. So I was wondering, when did you guys first feel that you came together as a cast as Four Hobbits as the center of the story? Can I take this one and answer it very quickly? Minute and a half. Go on. When the planes landed to show up. Oh, really? Mine was the hot tub night. Remember the bubbly hot oh, tub yeah. night? <laughs> One of the ones that you don't know, big, massive, kind of kidney-shaped hot tub, and we had pink bubbles in there, yep. and I think half of it was water and half of it was champagne, and we all got completely out of our minds, woke up in the morning with our underpants on our head, remember? Oh, yeah. That was when I felt like we all bonded. <laughs> the elements in of that all, that are true. <laughs> it, it happened relatively quickly. We were, we were prior to, to shooting, as many of you probably know, we, we were in New Zealand for two months prior to shooting in preparation for the film. And in that two months, we spent all of our time together, rehearsing, uh, dialect coach, a variety of various trainings. And in that, we were, uh, we were joined at the hip. We were- The cave troll scene. So fast. The cave troll sequence is when we knew we were a team. 
Yeah. Everyone okay. was together. Everyone was coordinating the stunts. What about uh, that boat race in the um, Oh, in, in the, the bathtubs. <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a uh, a race in bathtubs. There was yeah. a, there's a boat race in Wellington Harbor with bathtubs as yeah. the boats. So I won it. I won it to fail. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I won. Did you? I, I did. I won. I failed. Miss Orlando <laughs> cheated, obviously, and uh, I won. Brilliant. Yeah. There's, there's, there is photo, photographs. There are photographs from that day. Not only that, it's on a pillar in New Zealand. <laughs> Tom Monaghan. Yes, call back. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Can you guys give a huge Atlanta? Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We love you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. We love you, Atlanta. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.